hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Prendes. Uh, thank you for our pastor for allowing me to stand on this uh, pulpit. Of course, we honor our sister Tasha is here to be with us. And of course, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, I hope you will help me. I'm not, as you can see on my outward appearance, I'm, English is not my second language. It's, my first, it's not my first language. So help me. Praise God. I want to deliver the message from God. And uh, I hope God will speak to us today, tonight. Praise God. Shall we all stand? Without further ado, praise God. Let's read the word of God tonight. I'd like to just uh, read to you this verse that the Lord had spoken in John chapter 7. On verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit. And they are life. This is a direct word from Jesus Christ our Lord when he came into this world. And it's, it's powerful to understand these words that he said to us. And he said it to the, to the people who are hearing this. And it so happened that uh, I think John, chap actually John chapter 6 verse 63 is one of the saddest, one of the saddest scripture actually in the Bible. Because if you read it on, on verse 66, after he said these words, suddenly, even after he said this word, look what the people had Reacted. It says on 66 from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. We understand tonight, as I even stand on this pulpit, there's always the struggle between our flesh and our spirit. Amen. The word of God actually is, is spirit. As he, the Lord Jesus Christ had said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. That's why he said it also in the word of, in his word he said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You can find that also on Matthew chapter 4 verse 44. It is the struggle that, that we have even unto this now. Every service that we have, we are so blessed to hear the words of God being preached to us. So powerful. A lot of messages are so powerful enough for us to... Amen. Sometimes when we, come, we, we, we receive these words, we felt like this word will really make me strong. But when we go back home, there will always be the struggle between our flesh and our spirit. Sometimes we wonder where the word of God that we heard in the church, if it is still, you know, where's, where's the power of it? It's, it's still, but I know the word of God is powerful. Amen. But because the spirit sometimes... It's kind of trying to grab all the strength that we have and try to pull us down. Because remember, brothers and sisters, we are not after the flesh. Amen. To walk after the flesh, the Bible said, is death. Amen. But to walk after the Spirit, the Bible says, the Word of God says, is life. Praise God. Actually, when I, when I try to contemplate everything as we, at this age right now that, I, that I'm in, I've entered the age of, you know, the golden, the golden age. <laughs> and you, it's obvious, right? Amen. 
we realize that months of our travel have always been coming from our place. The desires of our place. Everything that's, that the place dictates to us always, it gives us the, you know, the, this anxiety, these worries. But when you try to realize it in the spirit, when you try to realize it, how, how you know, God had blessed us so much in the spiritual realm also. But in the place, of course, we have the needs, physical needs, fleshly needs, and everything of this. And we desire, you know, we want houses, we want cars, we want these material things that, the, you know, our, our, our human flesh desires. And it always, it doesn't say it's bad, but it's something like, it's just that all of this, these worries, all these needs that we have always becoming a hindrance to what God wants us to become. Amen. And even in the, in the simplest form, that what, how God speaks to us. God always wants to speak to us. But sometimes the voice of the place is stronger than the voice of the Spirit of God. Even right now, you are sitting here. You are listening to me right now, but I don't know where your, where your mind is going on right now. We have to train our, man, our mind. We have to train ourselves to focus on the word of God being preached to us. It's always a struggle. Sometimes this mind will tell us, there's something you have to do after this. And then you try, you try to plan ahead. As, you know, you're still in the church where you're thinking about you know, the, the, the thing that you left behind or something that were you eating after this, right? <laughs> where you're going after this, you, you don't have the food in the house. So you, you, what, what restaurant will you go after this? Now it's feeling like you're hungry, you're hungry. Amen. It's always there. But I believe there's always the hunger that's crying in, also inside of us. The hunger for the, for the spiritual things that, that are always there. God had already prepared it to us. I believe when we come together here, God has already prepared a spiritual table. And he has already prepared a meal for you spiritually. But sadly to say sometimes... We leave this church never eaten what God had prepared for us. Because if we're not careful, the enemy tried to distract us from hearing the words of God. If there's anything more important in our coming here tonight, if there's anything more important, yes, we worship God, we sing, we sing songs. Uh, we come into the. We come here before this, before before this auditorium here. We come here with. We, we want to pray, right? Even our pastor had told us we we should come here before church. We, before the church starts, we always want to make sure we come that we have already prayed, right? But sometimes, of course, hundred. We're not hundred percent always coming here with prayer. Sometimes we're late. Because there are some stuff that we have to take care. Amen. But the truth is, all of this, we want God to speak to us. Every service. Because this is very important. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The most important part is our spiritual food. And what is our spiritual food? It is the word of God. The pure word of God. Praise God. You can read your Bible every day, but sometimes if you are not careful, you are just reading it as a book. Let the word of God speak to us as a life, as a, as a, as a living word. But it can only happen when we are always in an attitude of prayer and worship. Amen. That's why when we come together, our, our, we, we call it preliminaries, right, in the church. It, it conditions us so we, could be, so we will be prepared for the word of God, right? We try to discipline ourselves. We have to, we have to prepare ourselves for the preaching of the word of God, for the word of God that God will speak to us. I know, imagine this, imagine this, we are... 
if we are hundred, more than hundreds here tonight, and God can speak to us in a different way according to our needs because every one of us has different needs. I stand here before you, brothers and sisters. I don't even know what your needs are. But the Holy Ghost, but God knows every needs that are here tonight. We can be assured of that. Amen. He already prepared a table for you and me. Every need you have right now is here right now. Every need. Whatever that need you have right now, God has already prepared it for you. But the simple challenge is, are you going to take the answer? Are you ready to take that food that God had prepared for you tonight? I always, God never failed as a testimony of my personal life. When I come to church and I tell myself and tell God in prayer, Lord, speak to me tonight. Or if it is morning, of course, Lord, speak to me this morning. Today, right? We always, when you utter that word and you come into, a, into this church with, with a mental attitude that you need God and you need an answer from God, brothers, this is 100%, I assure you, God will meet your needs. Because this church, amen, this church is what. You know, we are here today, this church that we are gathered together, God has already prepared the answer for you and me. Shall we clap our hands? Why don't we just first clap our hands? Let's worship God. If you clap your hands right now, you are believing that God has the answer for you tonight. Amen. Don't allow the devil to speak to you and distract you. Amen. Don't allow the devil... To, to, to lead you away from hearing the word of God right now. Praise God. Because God will always speak to us. Praise God. How powerful was the word of God? Pastor asked us one time. I will use this, this point here because this message inspired me. To, the message that, I, that inspired me tonight is about we were on the apostolic theology class. Theology class. And pastor asked me this. What really, we have a lesson that we discussed. And we were all asked with what, what really, we read the same chapters. We read the same pages of the book. But every one of us has. See how, how true it is. Brother Prendes was saying a, a different message what he read, on what he read. Brother said, and some of us, we are all sharing what, what, what impacted us on that chapter. Right? And I told pastor about, Pastor, the only thing that is, that really, I, 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 all of the words, all of the, all of the subjects, all of the words, all of the pages that I read are all important. But there's one that strike me. You know what strike me? This, on this chapter, I, 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 I told the class, there's only one that strike me, which is so really, so really true. When God speak the word, when God speak to you, and when he uttered those words to you, you are 100% sure it will happen. Even, he, he, even those words that he spoke to you before are 30 years ago, Brother Prendes. It reminds me when I read that chapter, God has already spoken some words to me. And sometimes we doubt the promises of God. I'm, I'm not talking about the words of God are, are full of promises. This book, you can 100% put your faith in this and stand on the promises of the Bible. You can, st you can, you can, you know, let this uh, in front of God and say, Lord, the, your word says it here. Right? You can claim your promises here because you are now baptized in his name. Amen. You have repented of your sins and you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Evidence of speaking in other things. Every promise in the Bible, the children say, is ours. Every promise in the Bible is ours. But try to think about it. But how many times do we really read our Bible? Imagine just in, uh, 
one, one scholar said, don't you know that there are 365 beer nuts in the Bible? The word beer nut. They said there are 365 words of beer nut that the Bible said. It means you have every day the word of God telling you, fear not. You don't have to be afraid whatever that comes your way. Amen. You don't have to be afraid even if there's a problem. Even if there's an issue. Even if there's a misunderstanding. Even there's whatever comes your way. There is a promise of word of God every day for you. Not to fear. God is with us. If you believe it, why don't you clap your hands? Worship the Lord. The promise of God are true every day. He has a promise for you and me. Oh, how, how good is our God. How great is our God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Going back to... What, what inspires me about this, the Word of God is, it's, it's, it's already here. The Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. But try to go back to the creation. In the beginning was the Word. The Word, the Logos. John says, the Word was with God and the Word was God Himself. Because the Word, I tried to imagine this before like this. Imagine if there's nothing. Imagine if there is nothing that exists from the start. Nothing, right? Only God, right? There's no other God, right? There's no two gods. There's no three gods. There is only one God. One eternal, one almighty. Don't ever think that there's a, another God existing before. He is only the invisible, the infinite. We can never grasp that, actually. Just like we cannot grasp, I, I, when I was a child, I thought, when is, where is the end of the, of the roof of the, you know, of the universe, right? There's a roof. You know, there's an end of that. But as you imagine it, there's no ending. Try to get that. I, can, I cannot comprehend there's no ending. No matter how far you go, nothing. There's no roof like that. that will, we will say, I have reached the end. Nothing. It's all vast of. Space. Wow. It's just, it's just, the, it's just the, how you realize it. It's just how God is. But the good thing is, He chose to reveal Himself. He chose to manifest Himself. Before there's no word. There's just no sound. There's just a voice, nothing. It's just, it's just, all, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's all like a big vacuum of, of, of whatever. Scientists could not even explain everything. What, you know, they just kind of limit God on their, on their thinking. But imagine that, that invisible, uh, silent anything. But there, he is the one who, ex, who, you know, just there who exists. And then he spoke. The word of God started from the word expression. Then there comes a voice. There comes a word that come out. Let there be light. The darkness that surrounds the whole vastness of the universe started to have light. That word manifests himself. Into this award and everything, there was light. And he created us, as, as I, you know, we just have to, we just have to shortcut it because if I, I cannot explain everything, but imagine everything were created by the words of God. Amen. The Bible says in Colossians 1 15, who is the image of the invisible God? For by him were all things created 
that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible or invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. He created everything by Him and then it says, for Him. Because everything belongs to Him. Can we grasp that? That's so simple. He created us for Him. For His pleasure. And there's no one here. I'd like to say this tonight. I felt it. God is telling us. Every one of, the, of, every one of us under the sound of my voice. God loves you. Don't ever listen to the devil that God doesn't love you. God loves us. He created us. Everything for us and everything for him. Awesome. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. So the creative word of God who created everything that we see right now that exists. Because in Romans chapter 1, there is this. There is this uh, verse in Romans chapter 1, verse 19. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without excuse. The scripture had said, you know, the one, only the fool will say, there is no God. It is a declaration by the word of God. Only a fool will say, there is no God. Because it's already been seen. You can see it around us. The God who is the invisible. And everything that, that he created for us right now that we see. It speaks to us. That, that our God, who is invisible, chose to reveal himself and show his love for us. Amen. And that love today is still, still going on. I told this one time in my church, it's my conviction. Some people, the scientists, they were telling us like, there will be a big comment here coming down. Or whatever, you, whatever galactic uh, accident will happen here. Personally, my belief is. As long as my God is here. Because he loves us so much. He loves you. He loves you and me. I don't believe those things will happen. Not until, probably, when the church get out of this world. Not until the church, you and me, are out of this world. I love, I, I, I understand how great the God that we serve loves us so much and he won't allow anything that ha that will happen to us accidentally by by these things to wipe us away there is earthquakes some some places there is cyber, there's the natural calamities that happens once in a while but not to wipe out human race hallelujah shall we clap our hands to the lord <laughs> amen praise god praise god so imagine this, that God created everything by His Word. And also you and me were created by His Word. That's why the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. We need to always have the Word of God in our life. Amen. When He created man, we know our story in the Bible, in the, in the, in the, in the Eden where God put man, praise God, the man that God had created, the Bible says, he did not just say, let there be a man. Wow. Very different from all the creation that he said, let there be. But God, when he created man, man has, the Bible says, God created man in his own image, right? In his own image. And in the image of God created he them. So in this image, man is so special. 
Although God can talk to the animals, the, you know, He's the creator, but God loves to talk to us more. Because when He created man, He put man into the garden and He, he gave him all dominions and authority upon all His creation. You know that, right? That God had created man and he put man under, you know, he put man into authority where he will take dominion over all his creation. That's why I do believe by, by authority, God was speaking to man and man in, in the book of Genesis, he, can, he, he had the dominion over all this. And uh, one scholar said, how could, how could Adam, you know, gave names of all of these creatures? Wow. He gave, God gave him in charge. And, and, the, and the scholar said, Adam gave all, the, all of these uh, creatures names. He named them. Because God gave him that authority and power. And when God, you know, God directly speaks to man over all his creation, he speaks to man. It is man that he, he want to speak. I, I'm talking about this important here is because God, if he has a plan in this world, he will reveal it to us, right? Because we are, we are created in his image and he put us all, you know, we put everything under our dominion. Sadly to say, of course, sadly to say, man fell. Right? We can never bring back that, that, that situation. So what happened is now... When we fail, the only, the only command of God in the book of Genesis, in the garden, he only said, you can eat everything, but not these three. The disobedience from the word of God. It should try to summarize everything that we, the problem of humankind right now. It's only started with this disobedience. Disobedience from the word of God. Disobedience from the word of God. The moment that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Wow. That's the punishment. That's the, that's, that's the problem. Now, man, all of us, we're under the power of death. Which God never intended for us to have. And now we see this death working against us. Amen. We see that, that this place right now is being cursed. And that's why right now we're fighting against this curse. But we have hope. Praise God. We have hope. I'm not here to bring you bad message. I'm here to bring you good message. We can never, you can never... You know, we can never go back to the past, but we can only hope for what God has prepared for us in the future. And now, praise God, God came down as the living word. He came here. John said, the word was made flesh. He is the living word and he came here to fulfill all the, all the words of God that he put in his words in the Old Testament. We call him the law. Jesus Christ said, I came not here to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill the law. Just to redeem us from the curse of the law. From the, from, from the penalty of death. Now to pay the penalty, he died for us, right? To bring us back. To that communion. To bring us back to life. Amen. And, and before I go on to that. Brothers and sisters. So now after he died and rose again. The only commandment that God. That he has for us. Is for us that repentance. And remission of sins. Should be preached. In his name. Starting at Jerusalem. And to all the world. Amen. So the message of God, the same with, I, I told this one time, the message of God is the same with Adam and Eve. God gave them a simple instruction. Do not eat this. And they eat. But don't blame Adam. Right now, every man has always the choice also to follow God or disobey God. 
The only way, the only commandment of God tonight is repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. We have to acknowledge our sinfulness and come back to God. And believe the only message that God has for us today. Hallelujah. Amen. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins. Every man should obey the command of God again. But it's your choice. It's man's choice to follow or disobey again. It's all coming back to, to the same principle. Obedience to the word of God or disobedience. Right? Simple obedience. But because we have this place, you know, that is already cursed. We are living in this place right now. We have, that's why right now, to overcome this place, we need more word of God. Hello? To overcome the curse, to overcome the power of death. As Jesus has said in his word, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the place profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Brothers and sisters, we should understand now that the only way to be saved is to we need the word of God. Amen. We need the word of God. Praise God. So we have the word of God. We, we, our goal is always to hear the word of God, to have the word of God, and to obey the word of God. So all of those people now who are baptized in his name, repented of their sins. Can you just raise your hands right now? I know, I know a lot, some of us. Okay. Okay, we're done on that commandment now. But still, right now, after we obeyed Acts 2.38, God had given us the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost actually is our Lord Jesus Christ speaking to us. When he was in this place, he was telling his disciples, I will go away and I will come again. Right? I will go away. And I will come again. And I will be in you. The disciples cannot understand that actually when he was telling these words to them. But now we understand it. That Jesus, when he was walking on this earth, of course he is his place. He's in the place. He needs that place to redeem us. As a, a, to redeem human race, he became man. So he has to be in the place. But, he, he, you know, the victory always did not come only in the place. It came when he resurrected. And now, when he had that victory, now he came back to us. The Holy Ghost that we have right now, that all of us should have, right? That all, all of us should always have. I said it again. The Holy Ghost that all of us should always have. We don't leave it at home. <laughs> it's always with us because that's what he wants us. He wants to abide with us and be with us. And that Holy Ghost always speaks to us. Amen. And he said this, Jesus said it in, our, in his word. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, now there am I in the midst of them. The Holy Spirit is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ in our midst, but he is not limited into the place now, but he's now working among us, speaking to us. Hallelujah. If, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When did you, when did you have this birth, right? When did you have this, what we call, new birth? Remember when, when we said, finally, when we have received the Holy Spirit? The Bible says, you are a new creature. But actually, when you look at it in the place, something like nothing happened. Right? My hair did not grow back. Or, or your tooth did not start to, to grow again. If, you're, you know, if you have false tooth. <laughs> Sorry. It's still the same place, right? 
But the word of God, remember how, remember how I, I tried to think about this. Why did God chose the speaking in tongues? The words of God coming out. The Holy Spirit giving us the words flowing out of our mouth. Some of us do not even understand the mystery or the mysterious thing that God is doing when we are receiving the Holy Ghost. But God is doing a creative work inside of us. It's a powerful experience. It is not by flesh, but by the Spirit. God is creating in us a new man. Ready to be revealed from inside and out. Hallelujah. Shall we clap our hands to the Lord? That's the power of the Holy Ghost. And I do believe it is not just a one-time experience. Church, this is, God had given us this gift for us. Because God wants us to communicate. There are words that we cannot utter to God, honestly. My spirit, when we want to talk to God, I, can, I am limited on my words, honestly. We are all limited by words on what, what, what really the desire of our, you know, our spirit when he talks to God. There is a deeper desire that we don't know that, that this place could not understand. Honestly, this place is so limited and this place is so carnal. We may never, un this place could never understand the things of the spirit. It has to be put under. That's why our pastor has always been calling us to pray, pray, pray. Because in prayer, we see our place lying down. We see our place kneeling down. We see our place being surrendered under the power of the Spirit of God. Because if we don't pray, you are saying to God, I'm good. But actually you're lying. The devil make you believe in a lie. Brothers and sisters, don't listen to the devil when he say you don't need to pray. It's always coming to our flesh. You're still good. You still have that power. You're still okay. Brothers and sisters, we, we struggle. I know our flesh doesn't want to pray. Hello. Try to imagine this. If all prayers are being answered by God. Honestly, if you really believe that all your prayers will be answered by God. If you really believe that whatever you ask in his name, he will give it to you. Imagine this. You will not pray every day. You will not pray every, every, sec every now and then. Even wherever you go, even wherever, you know, wherever you are. That's the good thing about the Holy Ghost. Although... I know it's very important to pray in the church as a, as a testimony and as a, as a collective. When God, we gather together, there's, power, there's the power of God. But there's always supposed to be, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. You can always pray even when you're in, the, in your car. Amen. You, when you're at home, wherever you are, in your workplace, you can always pray. It doesn't have to be a one-hour prayer in the office because you will eat all the, all the time that you work, right? Don't make it an excuse. But somehow, even in a short moment, we need to always be in prayer. Amen. We don't have to be lying down. Of course, we are comfortable sometimes, you know, we want to really, you know, do the what, whatever position that we want, whatever attitude that we want when we're praying. But praise God, we can always pray. And we can always have a communion with God. Because we need it. We need God to speak to us. Let me go to this prayer right now. The most important part in our prayer life is not what we tell God. It's not what we say to God. Our goal in our prayer is to have the word of God. God speaks to you. Our goal will always be, that's my ultimate goal. That when we pray, if we could develop our senses, our, if we could have that, that, that sensitivity, that God always wants to speak to us. Try to put this. God wants to communicate with us. 
if we all want to, be, to talk to God, God also wants to talk to us, right? But sometimes we are busy talking to ourselves. Actually, we're not talking to God. We're talking to ourselves. We're talking to our own dreams, to our own desire. But most important part is when God tells you something. I say this one time in my church, in our church. You know what? I got, God told me a lot of things, but the, always the challenge is, will you obey <laughs> what he asked? Will you obey what he told you to do? That's why some people, maybe they don't want to, they just want to tell God whatever they, whatever they want to tell God or they, whatever they want to ask God. And they, they rush after that. Because honestly, we're afraid. Some people are afraid for what God will tell them. Have you ever wondered the devil is, so, is, is a liar? That he, sometimes he puts us in our mind that doing God's will is hard. Doing God's will is a sacrifice, right? We always think that doing God's will will kind of make us sad or lonely. But actually, on the contrary, on the contrary, doing God's will, it's what really make us happy and lively. And uh, doing God's will is always what makes us peaceful. Hallelujah. We always feel that the same, the same feeling that when we disobey God, there's always a feeling of guilt, right? There's always this bad feeling. No matter when you are being tempted, many people are tempted, and then when we are tempted, with, you know, sin is deceitful. When we, th we thought, you know, it will make us happy. But actually, when, we di when, we when we've done it, you will be sorrowful. Don't ever listen to the devil. Don't ever listen to the flesh. But sometimes we're, we're repressed. That's our, that's our struggle. That's our struggle every now and then. We're struggling against this flesh. Some even say, it's not the devil, it's our problem. Our greatest enemy is not the devil. I believe it's true. Our greatest enemy is ourselves. No one. The Bible even says nothing can separate us from the love of God. And if you will read all those, all those words, that, that, all those things that, that cannot separate us from the love of God, it did not mention yourself. Only you. Only you. Ourselves can separate us from the love of God. You start, you know, you people believe God doesn't love you. Then you start drifting away from God. Amen. When you start to think about yourself, about God will never forgive you. God will, you know, God, God is mad at you and you believe that. That lies from the devil. And then you started to believe that their own, there are your decisions, there are your thoughts. And then you become troubled. And then until you find yourself backsliding. Praise God. The Bible says, if we have seen, there's a way. If we confess our sins. When we do that, we do that in prayer, right? We always do that in prayer. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. No one can separate you but yourself. If you, don't, if you start not confessing your sins, if you start covering your sins, if you start hiding your sins from God, which is you cannot even hide, right? Hello. We are all here naked in the sight of God. We can never hide ourselves from God. Everything all things he knows. The only choice you have is to admit it to God. That is so simple, right? But sometimes there are people who try to hide their sin. 
But why the Bible says, see that covered his sins will not prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. All we have to do when we when we we are tempted, and probably we are we are we are we did fail. The only way is to come back to God in confession. All you have to do is admit it in the sight of God and ask God forgiveness, and God will give you the strength to to overcome sins. Because God will give us that power. Because all power is that is given unto me. All you have to do is trust Him. Hallelujah. Shall we clap our hands to the Lord? <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And tonight, as I conclude this message tonight, Praise God. If God has a word for us tonight, all we have to do is to open our hearts, open our minds, and start. If you have a hard time, honestly, if you have a hard time hearing from God, why don't you start thanking Him? Why don't you start worshiping Him? Amen. Amen. I remember one, one wisdom that our pastor had said, which I've never heard from other people. If you have a hard time hearing the word of God, if you have a hard time finding the will of God and hearing the word of God, when he said this word, remember this? He said, when was the last time that God spoke to you? Amen. When was the last time that God spoke to you and you forget it to do it? Go back to that. Because if God, if you, the, the, the truth is, we, won't, we all want to be, we all want the challenge, we all want God to speak to us every day, every day, every day, right? But only when we learn how to obey what He tells us. As obedient as we are to God, the more God will speak to us. Again, I'll say this again. The more obedient we are to God, the more God will speak to us. Because it all comes with this disobedience. If we become disobedient to God, you will always, right, the same. The same, the Bible make it clear. If we disobey Him, then God cannot speak to us again. Because we don't want to obey Him. But if we want to obey Him, and we do what He say to us, and we obey what He wants us to do, God will speak more to us. Amen. Shall we all stand, brothers and sisters? I felt to do this tonight. Sometimes I struggle praying for other people. But God, I was talking to God and God gave me, a, gave me this word. He said, if you're struggling how to pray for other people's needs. Sometimes in the church, we are all one body. You know, as the Bible said, every, you know, the, the pain of one, one member of our body, the whole body felt it, right? That's a principle. The pain of every one of us. We are just one body. And just even the least of us, whoever it is, everyone is actually, but somehow if there's a least of us, the least part of our member, no matter how small it is, if it's, if it's sick or if it's, you know, that well, it will be felt by the body. Right? Sometimes we have some needs. And most of the time, we can always, we always, sometimes when we have this need to ourselves, sometimes I could not pray for anybody right now. I want to pray alone. I want to talk to God. But one principle that I, that I found out in, in the kingdom of God is when you are in need, God already knows your needs. 
But sometimes that need is another person's need. You know what I mean? So that's why sometimes when we are praying for somebody and God brought you to a person, impressed you to pray for somebody, you don't, knew, you don't know what their needs are, right? God led you to somebody to pray for our brothers here. We are, I'm talking about in the church right now. When God allows us to pray for one another or sometimes the spirit is working and moving, right? We want to pray for one another. Sometimes we don't even know what to, how to pray and what to pray for our brothers, right? But if you start praying like you want to be prayed. If you start praying your needs to somebody. Pray, pray them as, as it is his needs. You are ministering to the body. You are ministering to your brother. Amen. Sometimes we are hurting. We come to the church, we have this hurt in us. And then we say, Lord, I cannot pray for, for my brother right now. I'm hurting. We always made this excuse. But sometimes that hurt also can be a tool to pray for somebody that God brought you, that you are hurting, but somehow he is also hurting. And you could pray for him like what you feel. You know, the most effective way of praying is praying like you are praying for yourself for somebody. Right? As, as it's, a, it's a golden rule. Whatever you want others do for yourself, do it to others. That's the simple, simple principle. Whatever, whatever what you want, others want to do for you, you do it to others. Praise God. So if, 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 you want, if you want to pray for your brother right now, why don't you pray the best for your brother? And we will have a victorious church. Amen. Because a selfish person can only pray the best for himself. But he could not pray for other people's best. But if you could pray the, the best for other people, God has always the best for you. And tonight, before we end up this gathering tonight, I felt God leading us tonight. Whatever God led you right now to pray. Okay, try to, to go to a brother right now that you felt like you want to pray. I don't want to make some confusion, but somehow closer to you, of course. Brother to brother, sister to sister. God wants to do something to the body by ministering to one another. I love this church because all, all, of us, all of us knows how to minister to one another. This is great, first church. This is one of the ingredients of a revival church. Amen. We are in a church and we ought to cultivate that. We ought to not lose this. Amen. If we want to be a continual, a blessing church, a blessed church, Let's learn how to minister to one another always. Putting others first. Amen. When we become more not selfish, when we don't, we don't some people, they, I, I will not criticize other people. I just see some other people here always crying and crying. But try to pray for, one, for, for a brother. Don't always come here crying and crying as if every day you have a problem. I only, you know, it's good to cry once once in a while here because you know you have you have this struggle, and 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 you always it's it's, it's, it's we love we love to be prayed, right? We all want to be prayed, true. But after you have been prayed true, hello, God wants us to pray somebody, pray to somebody true. God wants us to become ministers, all of us. If you come, if all of us here come into this church with the thinking, I want to be a blessing. Hello. If all of us, when we enter this place, I just want to be a blessing. I don't want to attract attention. I want to minister. I want to help somebody who is weak right now. Even just a shake of hands. Even just a small 
kindness, a small smile, a smile will help to somebody who is already grumpy or whatever, you know. Amen. If we can all develop this attitude, we will becoming, we will become the great church of San Jose that we want to be. If we only learn how to minister to one another and not just for your friends. Hey, I, I've observed this. Don't just pray for your friends. Hallelujah. I felt the Lord right now. Pray for somebody even if you don't know them. Please. It's not just the job of the ministers here in this church. There's so many of us. We cannot even pray to everyone. There's only few of us, right? But if we learn how to pray even to those that you don't even know, this is the will of God. Amen. As I've said, you don't know how to pray for them, just pray as you want to be prayed for them. Right? This is the secret of revival. A ministering church. A serving church. As our pastor wants us to all be. Always want to be a blessing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And right now, shall we all come right now and pray to one another? I don't know where you want to be right now or where you want to pray right now. Please, let's hold hands together right now. And pray and minister. Why don't we practice this right now tonight? Let us leave this place with victory in our hearts. And then the love of God. Hallelujah. Will be shared abroad in our hearts. And it will be flowing. It will overflow out of this church. Outside this community. Not just on the four walls of this building. Amen. The love of God that is overflowing inside this church will overflow outside the streets of San Jose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's touch God tonight. Hallelujah. Oh God, unite us together, Lord. Oh yes, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, God. Oh, I feel the Lord. God, have your way tonight. Have your way to your people, God. Let the love bind us together, Lord. Lord, and let it overflow out of this church. The world did the love of Christ in our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Start praying for your brother as you want to be prayed right now. Start praying as you want to be prayed right now. Please let me stay rest. Let the Spirit right now take control. The Spirit of God knows, knows our needs. God knows our needs tonight. Oh, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you. Take, take control. Take control, God. Take control. We want to be a revival church. We want to continue that the love of God will flow in our church. Let the power of God manifest in our midst. Lord, hallelujah. Start praying for somebody right now. 
Don't stay on your on your on your Don't stay on your seat. Try to look for somebody right now. Let the spirit of God lead you. Let the spirit of God lead you to somebody right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for somebody right now. Let the Spirit of God use you right now. Oh, what a joy to feel, oh God. Oh God, it's good. Oh God loves us so much. Don't stay on your side right now. Look for somebody. Look for somebody who needs a simple touch, a simple prayer. Learn how to minister. Learn how to be used by God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. God is having its way. Oh, God is so good, God. Your majesty. Oh, how great you are, God. You're good. You're good, God. Please let me stay Praise God. In 